To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long-lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever. It's Saturday the 5th of October, I'm Kira Revens and this was a week that saw the Tories squabbling in Birmingham Israel start a ground offensive in Lebanon the US vice presidential candidates face off and tributes to an actor and country music star Grab a cup of something hot put up your feet and get up to speed on the 7 biggest stories of the week This is the standout 7 from the small 7 It's news but not the news This week saw the Tory party conference in Birmingham, which began with party chairman Richard Fuller apologising to members for the poor election results. Temporary leader Rishi Sunak addressed attendees and called for party unity, asking them to end the division, backbiting and squabbling. His call didn't seem to have any impact on the four candidates competing for the final two slots in the leadership contest, with Tom Tuggenhan and James Cleverley, Robert Jenrick and Kemi Badenoch all doing media rounds before next week's vote by MPs that will see only two candidates go forward. Badnock was busy making headlines supporting Israel and saying that when it comes to immigration, not all cultures are equally valid. She also hit out at the levels of maternity pay. Statutory maternity pay, it is a function of tax. Tax comes from people who are working. We're taking from one group of people and giving to another. This, in my view, is excessive. Robert Jenrick disagreed with Badenoch's stance, but he took a strong anti-immigration line as he hoped to appeal to the party's right-wing voters. The age of mass migration must end. It's placing immense pressure on public services and on community cohesion. You can't integrate 1.2 million people into a small country each year. What I want to do is to set a legally binding cap on migration. Former Chancellor Jeremy Hunt was busy picking a fight with Labour Chancellor Rachel Reeves over her maths that showed a £22 billion black hole in the nation's finances. One of the, the biggest lies we've had is this nonsense about having the worst economic inheritance since the Second World War. I note that not a single independent economist has been prepared to come forward and back up Rachel Reeves in that claim. Tuesday saw day three of the Tory conference and for once it wasn't Kemi Badenoch making headlines. This time it was the turn of fellow leadership candidate Robert Jenrick who found himself under fire over an extraordinary comment he made in a video touting his campaign. He suggested that British special forces are killing terrorist suspects rather than have them released by the European Court of Human Rights. He defended the remarks on Tuesday. Former security minister and campaign rival Tom Tuggenhat took a very dim view of Jenrick's remarks. I spoke to a recently retired director of special forces this morning and I can just tell you a lot of people are extremely disappointed with the suggestions that they may be acting in ways that are not compatible with the values and standards of the British Armed Forces. That would be a terrible suggestion to make. It wasn't the only generic shock on Tuesday as he also confirmed that his daughter's middle name is Thatcher. James Cleverly has been trying to establish himself as a smarter candidate in the four-way contest but he's claimed that China should be paying for Peppa Pig as part of a discussion on the licence fee won't have helped the case. He says that whoever wins the leadership by Battle, the party has to change. We've got to recognise that uh, when we make promises but fail to deliver those promises, that angers and disappoints the British people and that's part of the reason why we were uh, booted out of government. Doing that again is not a good move. So let's make fewer promises that we actually mean and then deliver on all our promises. Day four of the Tory conference saw the stage handed over to the four leadership candidates to make their pitch to the membership. Each candidate had 20 minutes and the reviews suggested that none of them really nailed it. Robert Jenrick remains confident of a slot in the grand final and he was taking aim at the Labour government. A nation brimming with potential, let down only by big government and small-mindedness. Starmer sees a Britain fated for decline needing more migration, more woke. The country needs a leader. Instead, with Starmer, we've got an undertaker.
This week saw Israel continue to strike Hezbollah targets across Lebanon after a series of brutal airstrikes that killed much of Hezbollah's leadership, including Hassan Nasrallah. Iran vowed revenge and Hezbollah continued to fire rockets across the weekend, but Israel remained determined to deliver on the goals it had set in its war cabinet. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu addressed the UN General Assembly despite a walkout from many delegations in protest. If you strike us, we will strike you. There is no place in Iran that the long arm of Israel cannot reach. And that's true of the entire Middle East. IDF spokesperson Peter Lerner defended the strike on the suburbs of Beirut, claiming it was precise and targeted based on intelligence. He says that the death of Nasrallah changes the situation in the region. This person, this terrorist, this individual who has the trail of blood on his hands Uh, no longer poses a problem. So there can be a way forward. Early on Tuesday morning, there was confirmation that what the IDF called limited, localised and targeted raids against Hezbollah targets in Lebanon were underway. Already an estimated one million people have fled the conflict as airstrikes have rained down in Beirut and southern Lebanon. Head of news and media for UN refugee agency Matt Saltmarsh says things are grim on the ground. The situation is absolutely desperate in Lebanon. Some 120,000 people have been displaced. Many of those who have been displaced are going to government-run reception centres, but there's not enough space for everyone. So a number of people are out in the streets. Iran struck back at Israel on Tuesday, launching waves of ballistic missiles at targets across the country. It appears almost 200 missiles were launched, but almost all appear to have been intercepted and no casualties were reported at the US military and Israel's air defence systems worked together to combat the strikes. The strikes, which Iran claimed were legal, rational and legitimate after an Israeli invasion of Lebanon and the strikes on Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer condemned the attack on Tuesday evening. It cannot be tolerated. We stand with Israel and we recognise her right to self-defence in the face of this aggression. Iran must stop these attacks, together with its proxies like Hezbollah. Iran has menaced the Middle East for far too long. UN Security General Antonio Guterres says the region has had enough of escalation after escalation and that we absolutely need a ceasefire. However, Israel is determined to retaliate as PM Netanyahu called a full meeting of the War Cabinet and Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Dannon, so there's no question of a ceasefire at this time. And I can tell you one thing. We will retaliate. It will be painful. We will not sit idly by when a state is attacking, a terror state like Iran, is attacking our civilians. US President Joe Biden attempted to draw a red line for Israel on Wednesday, declaring that an Israeli strike on Iranian nuclear sites was off limits. He did, however, agree that Israel has a right to respond to Iran's ballistic missile attack. Iranian President Masoud Pazeshkin spoke at a press conference in Doha and said Iran is not seeking a war, but warned that they will strike again if Israel retaliates. At the UN Security Council meeting, Iranian Ambassador Amir Saeed Aravani was keen to lay the blame at Israel's door. The only way to prevent further escalation is clear. Israel must immediately cease its war on Gaza and its attacks on Lebanon must stop. Israel's troops continue to push forward into Lebanon on Thursday with the IDF issuing evacuation warnings for residents in the city of Nabatea. The ground invasion follows the assassination of Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah last weekend and there was new information on the background to the strike on Thursday. Lebanese Foreign Minister Abda Abu Habib told CNN that moments before the leader was killed, a ceasefire deal had been agreed. We agreed completely, Lebanon agreed to ceasefire and we informed the Americans and the French that that what happened and they told us and uh, that uh, Mr. Netanyahu also agreed on the statement that was issued by both presidents. Friday saw more airstrikes in Beirut as Israel appeared to target Hezbollah's new leadership. Prime Minister Keir Starmer was quick to support Israel's right to defence after the Iranian ballistic missile attack on Tuesday evening. But independent MP Zara Zoltana said that he's out of step with the views of the public. What we're hearing is a prime minister that is not reflecting British public opinion. The British public is clearly on the right side of history and it's a shame that our political leaders are not.
This week was another tough one for Labour as the row over donations and gifts rolled in. It started with a resignation from Labour's Rosie Duffield, who is probably best described as a controversial MP. She represents the constituency of Canterbury for Labour, but she's had a checkered history with the party over her views on women's rights and transgender issues. She managed to make headlines over the weekend with a dramatic resignation letter accusing Prime Minister Keir Starmer of taking members and voters for granted and slamming him for accepting gifts and hospitality while also cutting the winter fuel allowance. Labour Minister Pat McFadden says she's been disillusioned with the party for some time and will now sit as an independent MP. She appeared on the BBC on Sunday morning to recap her grievances. It's just so profoundly disappointing to me as a Labour voter to just see that this is what we've become and it's more about greed and power than it is about making a difference. Wednesday was a busy day for PM Keir Starmer. He started off with a flying visit to Brussels. He sat down with EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen as part of the government's new and more diplomatic approach to the UK's European neighbours. The EU bloc remains keen to negotiate a youth mobility arrangement that would see travel and work restrictions lifted between the UK and Europe for young people. But Labour are weary about negative press if they're seen to restore freedom of movement in the wake of Brexit. Starmer said the focus was on resetting the diplomatic relationship first and that there would now be regular summits between the two sides. I firmly believe that the British public wants to return to pragmatic, sensible leadership when it comes to dealing with our closest neighbours, uh, to make Brexit work and to deliver in their interests. He also took the opportunity to make a statement designed to finally lay to rest the ongoing donation scandal as the PM announced that he was paying for any gifts received since Election Day in a bid to reset and move on from a tidal wave of bad press. He's made a payment of £6,000, which doesn't include the tickets for Arsenal. We came in as a government of change. We are now going to bring forward principles for donations. So I took the decision that until the principles are in place, it was right for me to make those repayments. Industry Minister Sarah Jones says the reason the PM has made the gesture is to draw a line under the issue and to help restore trust in politics. We need to do more to make sure people trust politicians because politics can be a force for good. That is the whole driving value of what Keir Starmer is about and that's what he's going to do in this government. The Tory party were quick to criticise, saying Starmer was only being transparent because his back was against the wall. He's also an answer of view of the rules around donations with an update due to the ministerial code and a new set of principles on gifts and donations. Mayor of Greater Manchester Andy Burnham says it's an appropriate way to handle the issue. He's absolutely right to say clearer rules are needed uh, for everybody so everyone knows exactly what's expected. So I think we've got to the right place here and I think it will help all members of parliament. The clock is ticking down to November's US presidential election and the opinion polls continue to show an incredibly tight race between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Meanwhile, their vice presidential nominees, Tim Walls and J.D. Vance, spent the weekend getting ready for a debate on Tuesday night on CBS. On TV, Saturday Night Live returned, bringing back Maya Rudolph to play Kamala, while Andy Samberg took on the role of her husband, Doug Emhoff. Both candidates have been crisscrossing the country, focusing on key swing states, with Trump appearing to call Harris mentally impaired during one campaign stop. But it's clear that he's growing increasingly erratic and unfocused as the campaign goes on. Oh, there's a fly. Oh, I wonder where the fly came from. See, two years ago, I wouldn't have had a fly up here. You're changing rapidly, but we can't take it any longer. In advance of the vice presidential debate, Kamala Harris was still trying to tempt Donald Trump into a second debate, telling a crowd in Vegas that she's all in, but he seems reluctant. One way or another, former Secretary of State and defeated 2016 Democrat Hillary Clinton told Radio 4 it's an election that is a must win for Harris and America. It's imperative to defeat Donald Trump, to break the fever that he has caused in our political system and to try to help the Republican Party become a a party of principle again, not not a party that uh, basically follows him. Early Wednesday morning saw the first and only US vice presidential debate. Democrat and governor of Minnesota Tim Walz took on Donald Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance. The two sparred over 90 minutes discussing the Middle East, abortion rights, immigration and the economy. J.D. Vance got annoyed at one point when he was fact-checked over claims about migrants in the town of Springfield, but he delivered a polished performance. Polling by CNN amongst debate watchers saw Vance win 51 to 49. Walls put Vance under pressure a number of times, including when it came to Trump's election denialism over 2020. Did he lose the 2020 election? 
Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer. Still to come on the stand at 7, Britain makes an unexpected diplomatic gesture and tributes to an actor and country music star. Right after this. To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long-lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever. Welcome back. Russia shows no sign of relenting in its war in Ukraine this week as President Putin announced that a further 133,000 troops would be drafted this winter while there's been a 30% increase in Russia's military budget. Ukrainian President Zelensky has been warning that the situation on the ground is difficult as Russian troops continue to push forward in Donetsk aiming to make gains before the winter sets in. Tuesday saw a change of leadership at NATO as former Secretary General Jens Stolenberg officially handed over the reins to new NATO Chief Mark Roth. He called for continued solidarity from Alliance members and sought to calm concerns about Putin's threats on nuclear weapons. We do not see any imminent threat of nuclear weapons being used. Um, and, and that's what I want to say about this at this moment. Uh, because let him talk about his nuclear arsenal. He wants us also to discuss his nuclear arsenal. And I think we shouldn't. The new Secretary General Mark Rutt hit the road on Thursday as he visited Kyiv for the first time since he succeeded Jens Stolenberg. He met with Ukrainian President Zelensky and offered assurances that Ukraine's NATO membership is closer than ever. But with Russia continuing to make headway in the Donbass, that may not be much comfort. Ukrainian forces had to abandon the city of Oledar this week, giving Russia a major victory as winter approaches. Rutt says Western allies are aware of the pressure and the need for faster delivery of weapons. We know the need is urgent. And we are working hard to do more and more quickly. Supporting Ukraine and replenishing our own stocks means increasing industrial production. And that will be a priority for me. There was a somewhat unexpected government announcement on Thursday that sparked a political firestorm. The UK formally gave up its right to the tiny Chagos Island group, which are located in the Indian Ocean and have long been claimed by Mauritius. The agreement came after years of negotiation and was welcomed by US President Joe Biden and a joint US and UK military base on the island of Diego Garcia will remain in operation as part of the deal. The announcement, however, sparked fierce criticism from Tory candidates, including Tom Togginhat, who called it a shameful retreat, and James Cleverley, who branded it as a weak deal. Former British diplomat Jonathan Powell wasn't too impressed. These uh, comments are a bit silly. James Cleverley was leading these negotiations not that many months ago. The reason the British government started negotiating with the Mauritians was because of the the law cases. So for the people who were involved in that negotiation to start criticising the outcome, something they couldn't achieve is absolutely ludicrous. Last weekend saw the death of Oscar winner Maggie Smith of Beverly Hills Cop star John Ashton and on Sunday night Chris Christopherson. He was an extraordinary character, a songwriter and country music legend, an acclaimed actor and a winner of multiple Grammys and a Golden Globe. He wrote classic songs including Me and Bobby McGee and Sunday Morning Coming Down and he starred opposite Barbara Streisand in A Star Is Born. He was 88 years of age and had been retired from music since 2021. He described how life before fame helped him with songwriting and acting. Rest in peace, Chris. But I had done a lot of things. I've worked on as a laborer in Wake Island and I'd worked in Alaska on the railroad and firefighting and four years of college, two years at Oxford, five years in the army, a couple of years flying helicopters out in the Gulf of Mexico and I'd been a lot of things and I'd done a lot of things. You've been listening to The Small 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes, we'll give you the world. 
To get people excited about Boost Mobile's new nationwide 5G network, we're offering unlimited talk, text, and data for $25 a month. Forever. Even if you have a baby. Even if your baby has a baby. Even if you grow old and wrinkly and you start repeating yourself. Even if you start repeating yourself. Even if you're on your deathbed and you need to make one last call. Or text. Right, or text. The long lost son you abandoned at birth. You'll still get unlimited talk, text, and data for just $25 a month with Boost Mobile. Forever. After 30 gigabytes, customers may experience slower speeds. Customers will pay $25 a month as long as they remain active on the Boost Unlimited plan. Forever.